Hello guys and welcome to the fourth chapter of The Creakers. I hope you've enjoyed chapters one, two and three. If you haven't watched them already, I would suggest you do so before this chapter. So, I'm going to start where Miss Love left off. Okay, so things are going to get a little scary. Don't say I didn't warn you. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Here we go. Chapter 4. Lucy wasn't alone. Lucy's eyelids were feeling heavy. She was exhausted after her busy day helping the kids of Whiffington adjust to life with no grown-ups about. However, even though she felt more tired than she'd ever been, for some reason she just couldn't sleep. She lay on her bed and started to imagine she was sinking peacefully into the mattress, as if it was a fluffy cloud. She closed her eyes and for a moment she could see her mum perched on the edge of her bed where she normally sat each night. She'd slip off the hairband holding her hair back, letting her long brown curls fall down past her shoulders as she sipped on their nightly shared mug of cocoa before handing it to Lucy. Close your eyes, my little Lucy Pops, Mrs Dunkston would say, her brown eyes twinkling. Feel yourself floating on the fluffiest cloud, light as a feather. But Mum, I'm just too awake to go to sleep. It's impossible, Lucy would answer. Impossible isn't real, Lucy Pops. It's just in your mind. Lucy felt the corners of her mouth rise into a little smile at her mum's nickname for her, Lucy Pops. Her dad used to call her this too, before he left. Suddenly the fluffy cloud she was floating on in her mind dissolved and she was just lying on her cold mattress in her empty room in her empty house. Alone. Impossible certainly felt very real. She quickly closed her eyes again in an attempt to get back on that cosy cloud. She tried to imagine her body sinking into it. It was her favourite thing to imagine. But on the night of the day it all began, Lucy's mind just couldn't imagine things right. Her comfy cloud was not as comfy without her mum there. Where are you, mum? Lucy thought as she rolled onto her side and looked at the full moon through the gap in the curtains as it watched over Whiffington Town. Was her mum out there somewhere? Lucy tried to shake the worry out of her head. She rolled this way and that, then that way and this, but neither way was working, so she just settled on her back, staring up at the ceiling. Her heart sank as the little glow in the dark stars and planets looked back down at her. Her dad had once arranged them into a giant smiley face on the ceiling. Lucy realised that there were reminders of her parents dotted all over her room. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see the certificate presented by her dad on the day she broke the family jelly baby eating record, gulping down 27 in 30 seconds. Even the green ones. She turned away from the wall, but this put her face to face with the bookcase, which was overflowing with all the stories her mum read with her. The absence of her mum made it very quiet in her house, unusually quiet. So quiet, in fact, that the silence was almost loud. Lucy tried humming mm -hmm, a little song to herself, a lullaby, but it didn't help. It just reminded her of her dad. Time for a song, Lucy Pops, she pictured him saying as he reached into his pocket for his most prized possession, his silver harmonica. Any request, he always asked, but Lucy knew he was teasing because he always played the same song. It was one he'd written himself and it was called Lucy's Lullaby. He would played it to her every night until he disappeared. Lucy sighed. <sighs> She got out of bed and walked over to her wardrobe, but just as she was about to open the door, she heard a tiny noise. It sounded like the crick of her floorboards. 
Lucy suddenly felt a little chill, a shiver running down her back like someone was watching her, which you already know was true, but Lucy didn't yet. Hello, she called. She looked over her shoulder, but there was no one there. Don't be such a silly sausage, Lucy, she whispered firmly to herself. You're just getting the chills because you're alone. Now pull yourself together. With that, she opened her wardrobe and lifted a wooden panel on the floor which revealed a secret hiding place. This was where she kept special things she didn't want anyone else to find. There wasn't much in it. A pretty shell she'd found at the beach once. A smashed up conker that had got her to second place in the playground conker championships. And a framed photograph. She picked it up and stared at it. Three people smiled up at her from the picture. A young Lucy with her arms wrapped around her mother's neck as she kissed Lucy on the head and, behind them both, cradling the two most precious things in his life in his arms, Lucy's dad. Lucy's heart ached every time she looked at this photo and at how happy the three of them were. She always made an extra effort to study her dad's face as if she was afraid that somehow she might forget him. She held the photo close so she could keep every detail. She saw his eyes, were, which were a deep, twinkling blue. His nose, which was a little bit big, just like hers. His mouth, which looked like it might break into a smile and make the dimple in his cheek appear at any moment. She smiled to herself and hugged the photo tight to her chest. There was one more thing hidden in Lucy's secret hiding place, folded neatly underneath the other treasures. It was a bright fluorescent green colour and was giving off an awful stench of stewed sprouts and fish scales. Ooh. Lucy pulled out her dad's stinking work coat, the one he had worn when he was driving the big, pongy rubbish truck. She'd kept it hidden in here so her mum wouldn't find it and throw it away like the rest of her dad's stuff. Lucy slid her arms into the sleeves and put on the bright, smelly jacket. It was far too big and engulfed her like a stinky fluorescent duvet. She sat down, her back against her wardrobe, and took a deep breath. The disgusting fumes filled her nostrils with comforting memories of her dad and she suddenly felt a little better. She snuggled into the coat and made herself comfy on the floor, but as she wriggled, Something fell out of its pocket and clunked loudly on the floorboards. Something silver and shiny. It was her dad's harmonica. She picked it up smiling and played Lucy's lullaby as best she could. It wasn't as magical as when her dad played it, but it melted away some of her troubles, at least for a moment. When she finished, she held it tight in her hands and stared at the reflection on its shiny surface. She saw her face looking back at her. Then she tilted it slightly and saw the moon through the curtains. A little more and she saw her bedside table, then her bed, and then the beady black eyes of the creature hiding under it. What? Lucy looked up from the harmonica and stared into the blackness of the shadowy gap beneath her bed, but the watching eyes had gone. Her heart was racing. No, sprinting in her chest. Had she imagined it? Or had there really been a pair of shiny eyes looking at her from under the bed? Lucy wanted to stand up, but she, but she couldn't. She was frozen to the spot, frozen with fear. She was completely on her own in her dark bedroom, in her quiet house, in the middle of the night, with a creature lurking under her bed. And things were about to get even weirder. That was chapter four. I wonder what might happen in chapter five six seven and eight you have to come back and tune in when the next episode is released tomorrow i hope you're all enjoying yourselves at home and staying really safe take care guys